Good afternoon, or evening. My name is Emily Lettergerber. I am the manager of marketing and events at the Anti-Cruelty Society. For 111 years, the Anti-Cruelty Society has provided an open door for Chicago's neediest animals. Our mission of building a community of caring by helping pets and educating people is evident in all of our programs and services. Tonight, we'll be discussing our volunteer program and foster program at the Anti-Cruelty Society on this live, interactive, call-in television program brought to you by CAN-TV 21. During the next 25 minutes, we will be discussing what the programs entail and how you can get involved. We invite you to call in with your questions at 312-736, excuse me, 312-738-1060. My guest today is Lydia Kapinski. She is the volunteer coordinator mm -hmm. at the Anti-Cruelty Society, and she will be discussing our programs that we offer. Mm -hmm. How's it going, Lydia? Good, good. Thanks for having You're me. You're welcome. Lydia is not the, this is not the first time she's been on here. She's <laughs> actually a seasoned pro. So if you do have any questions for us, definitely call in. She knows everything there is to know about the volunteer program and our foster program. So first we'll start off and we'll be talking about our mm -hmm. foster program. Mm -hmm. Can you give just a general overview of the program and what it entails? Yeah, so our foster program is one of the many volunteer programs that we have available to people who are looking to help in some way. Our animals as well as staff that work at the uh, Anti-Cruelty Society. So the foster program, essentially what it is, is we have animals who for whatever reason can't make it to the adoption mm -hmm. room. Either they're sick or perhaps they're really, really shy. And so the foster program enables them to go home and spend some time one-on-one -on -one with a family or with an individual and kind of come out of their shell and be at their optimal level before okay. coming back and hitting the adoption floor. Okay, so why can't these ad these animals be adopted right away? Why mm -hmm. aren't they a, a, on the adoption floor to begin with? Mm -hmm. So um, we foster for one of four reasons, um, and some of these will definitely cross and overlap between mm -hmm. one another, but for the most part, um, our fosters are going out for sickness, for illness okay. reasons. So um, either the animal will come into the, the shelter system already ill, or uh, in some cases they'll come in, and mm -hmm. just like humans, you know, some pathogens are contagious, right. so right. dogs can come down with something like a kennel cough or cats okay. with upper respiratory infection. So okay. those are the animals that we'll send out to foster care. So okay. it could be illness. Sometimes it's socialization. Okay. Um, animals, when they come into into our organization, sometimes they'll go through something called shelter shock, okay. uh, which they basically shut down, get depressed. They're not their typical personalities. Okay. And we want people, when they're choosing an animal to adopt, to be able to see what they're really going to be like when they're in that flourishing environment at home okay so we'll send those animals out for foster mm -hmm. just to give them some time to acclimate to not being with their original owners okay. uh, then we also foster for age and weight considerations so uh, puppies kittens that are too young to go through um, an alteration surgery so before they can be neutered or spayed mm -hmm. we'll send them out um, to literally just grow up in a foster home okay so it's kind of like going to a hospital. If you and I were to go to a hospital, mm -hmm. not only could we potentially just be unhappy at the hospital, mm -hmm. but we could also pick up potential diseases that we're not used to being around. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So the foster homes give them an opportunity to kind of bounce back quicker than if okay. they were just to sit in the hospital, as it were, as you're describing. Great. Mm -hmm. If you are interested in fostering an animal, you can contact us on our website at www.anticruelty.org or email us at info or volunteer, which you prefer. We can do info. <laughs> it's fine. We can do info at anticruelty.org or mm -hmm. you can call us at 312 644 8338. So what are some of the benefits of actually fostering? Mm -hmm. Well, on the animals part, we talked a little bit mm -hmm. about how much it benefits their health as well as their personalities. Um, another analogy we like to use is if you're sick and you have to go to work, you're not going to be able to get right. better as much as if you were at home and someone was feeding you chicken soup and right. just tending to your needs. So for the animals, there's a huge benefit there, but okay. not just for the animals. I think that the foster parents get a lot out of it. Okay. We have some serial fosters, meaning that <laughs> they always have one of our animals at home because they get a lot out of not knowing that they're helping that specific animal, but also helping the organization in, as a whole. Because okay. every time we get a foster animal you know, placed, we have more space to take another mm -hmm. animal who is sick and perhaps waiting in a holding room. Okay. You know, to be put in our rehabilitation center to be um, to be worked with and to be treated. So, um, so the the families as well get a lot right. out of it. I think. 
Um, I myself have fostered, mm-hmm. and I loved the experience. I loved it so much that I, quote, unquote, failed <laughs> as a foster parent. <laughs> I ended up keeping the cat that I fostered, and it mm-hmm. still has been the best experience that I've had in a long time, and I, I definitely would foster again. So if you are interested, you should definitely yeah. consider fostering. Yeah, and that's not an uncommon experience. No, it definitely not. happens that people <laughs> fall in love with their fosters and then decide to keep them as a forever pet. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, it looks like we have a call. Mm-hmm. Um, hello, how are you today? Hi. Hi, good. Thanks for taking my call. My question is, if you already have a dog or a cat, can you still be a foster uh, parent? Yes, that is a great question. Um, absolutely. We actually encourage, especially for fosters that are going out for social reasons, so perhaps they're shy. Uh, we know they came from a background where they had other animals that they were living with, so we know it's not a matter of them not getting along with other animals, but sometimes they need a chance to just kind of come out of their shell a little bit, especially for kittens and puppies who perhaps are coming in on their own and have never had another animal that they've interacted with. Um, we like to have people foster them out who have animals at home. Um, Grant Uh, even for people who are fostering animals for age or weight considerations, there's always that chance that they can be harboring some kind of illness. So we ask people to keep them separated at least for a couple of weeks during the beginning of the foster period. So if they do have kennel cough, for instance, it has time to come to the surface Mm -hmm. so that we know. um, And then after that initial waiting point, then the foster parent has the option of letting their animals meet, although sometimes it can be easier to just keep them separate. But it does not disqualify you from becoming a foster parent. You just mentioned, and I'm just going to ask you this, um, that you want them separated for potentially a couple of weeks. What is the normal range um, time frame that Mm -hmm. you foster a pet? Mm -hmm. It really depends. Um, On average, it's about a month, so four weeks. Um, We have foster parents who can't perhaps uh, commit to a full four-week period because either they travel a lot for work or they know they'll be going out of town for some kind of recreational purpose. So um, so they'll email us and say, hey, I have two weeks free. Do you have any animal who just needs socialization foster or something like that? So um, for the younger animals, sometimes it can go up to two months. Um, We do have some uh, animals who have a more critical illness. Mm -hmm. So we'll say up front, hey, this animal may need you know, upwards to even six months of foster care. But that's something that we would communicate with the individual before we place them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're just joining us, my name is Emily Lettergerber. I'm the manager of marketing and events at the Anti-Cruelty Society. I'm here with Lydia. She is our volunteer coordinator at the Anti-Cruelty Society. And we're discussing our foster program and volunteer programs. And you are watching can tv 21 so if you are interested in calling in this is a live call-in interactive television program Mm -hmm. you can call us at 312-738-1060 and as we were just discussing the foster program i do want to bring up that we do have a foster blog Mm, um in this blog and this is an example of the actual blog itself um this is a blog that people can upload their foster experiences on, correct? Yeah, so the foster blog, it's just another tool for our foster parents to interact, um, not just with one another and other foster parents, but also to show the public who they have in their care. So um, it's a great way for them to connect with people who are potential adopters for these animals. And I think it's just a fun way to kind of show off the animal that you're helping to rehabilitate. So um, I know we've had fosters in the past kind of give us weekly updates. Okay, so this is my puppy. They just lost their teeth you know and this is you know the cute quirks about their personality that we're finding out so it's a way for them to share with the world um, this unique personality that's been entrusted to them what's good about it too is if you are thinking about fostering you should Mm -hmm. definitely visit the blog because you can actually see exactly what a lot of these foster parents are going through Mm -hmm. I know there's a couple entries on there about puppies losing teeth Mm -hmm. and how the animals are getting along with the other animals that Mm -hmm. the other fosters have that are their Mm -hmm. own and they're just really cute so if you are interested in uh, fostering definitely check out our foster blog it's on our website at www.anticruelty.org and if you look under the volunteer and foster area you can go in and you can actually get to our our blog Mm -hmm. now this little lady here Mm -hmm. her name is Cassie she's actually one of the favorite fosters at the anti-cruelty society can you share a little bit about her story yeah, so Cassie um, is, I think, uh, a case that's really near and dear to, to many of our mm-hmm. hearts because she um, went through many different layers of the of the shelter system before being um, placed in a forever home. But Cassie came to us um, 
sometime in the middle of last year, so in 2009, and she was brought in by a volunteer um, whose neighbor had passed away and had been Cassie's previous owner. Okay. Now, before Cassie was united with that owner, mm -hmm. and originally she was found um, in an oil barrel at um, an auto mechanic shop and okay. as a kitten. And so the owner, um, who is no longer with us, but the owner had taken her in and raised her. And the thing that I think made Cassie... Uh, exceptional is that she came to the Anti-Cruelty Society with this volunteer bringing her in um, at the, at the I guess you can say, ripened age of 15. Nice. Which is not common for us to mm -hmm. receive animals that are at that, you know, high of an age. So, um, so as soon as Cassie hit the adoption floor, all of the volunteers and staff were in action trying to find her a new forever home. Um, and for those of you that may not know, cats have an average lifespan of about 20 years. So that's something that, you know, the new owner would have to take into mm -hmm. consideration when deciding mm -hmm. to take in this animal. So, um, so the staff and volunteers are all working together to try to find her a home. And in the middle of all of this, Cassie came down with an upper respiratory infection. Okay. Now, the upper respiratory infections, they're very similar to the common mm -hmm. cold or the human flu. So the symptoms are, you know, runny nose or they'll have difficulty breathing, a lot of um, lethargic behavior. So being that she was of 15 years of age, right. we knew that she was going to be a little bit more fragile. So we wanted to get her out of the shelter system into a foster home as soon as possible so that she can be rehabilitated. So we actually contacted the volunteer that had originally brought her in. Okay. Um, and she fostered her for several months. That's great. And yeah, we love to hear that. Yeah, and it, it's just and it's just all these different layers of the volunteer and staff programs mm -hmm. working together. And um, and so this volunteer, foster volunteer, started posting images of her on our okay. website and just giving people updates. And hey, okay. this is what Cassie's up to lately. She's getting better. And uh, and a woman actually was following her progress online and fell in love with her uh, through the internet. And okay. the second Cassie came back to us um, and was readmitted into the shelter, she came in right away and adopted her so um, I just love that story because again this was an exceptional animal 15 years of age mm -hmm. we were really concerned that it would take a long time for her to find her new owner but with the help of our volunteers and our staff and the foster blog all these elements kind of worked together to find her a new home so we we're really excited Wonderful. about that that's awesome I just, if you are interested in fostering, I can't say it enough, definitely visit our website at mm -hmm. www.anticruelty.org or call us at 312-644-8338. Now, if you're just joining us, my name is Emily Lettergerber. I'm the manager of marketing and events at the Anti-Cruelty Society, and I'm here with Lydia. Mm -hmm. She is the volunteer coordinator at the Anti-Cruelty Society, and right now we're talking about our foster program. And this is just another cute little <laughs> foster animal that has been at the... Um, the shelter and has been fostered mm -hmm. and actually Lydia he was your foster <laughs> yeah he was one of my fosters I was <laughs> laughing because um this picture made its way on the slide and I'm like oh that's Thor I fostered him so Thor was a chihuahua that came into our shelter system and, and was immediately scooped up by one of our behaviorists um, because of socialization issues so Thor was not fostered out initially because of health problems it was more so because he was acting very mm -hmm. shy very skittish he was a tiny tiny chihuahua about this bag, if you can see <laughs> the size ratio there between me and and that. So, um, and I don't really have a lot of experience with chihuahuas, mm -hmm. but my husband does. So okay. I decided to foster him for a weekend. And in the meantime, a friend of mine had been looking to add a new chihuahua to to her pet family. So we actually ended up fostering Thor for about three or four days and then handing him off to my okay. friend. Um, and she fostered him for a month. Okay. Really, it was like night and day. When he was rehabilitated, he was a whole new dog. He was That's confident. Great. He had um, some skittishness bef before towards males. That was gone. Um, not acting um, in any way apprehensive around other dogs. So there was some huge progress made with him. And okay. so um, my friend decided that he wasn't a good fit for her pet family. So mm -hmm. um, we brought him back to the shelter and he was adopted within a week and a half after right this away. rehabilitation. Right away. This little guy is yeah. so cute. So, so Thor was a imagine. great success story right. as well. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So if, if you are thinking about um, fostering, definitely mm -hmm. give us a call. We are here. This is a live call-in program. Our, you can call us at 312-738-1060. But Lydia, I am going to ask you a few more questions about it. Yeah. Um, what is actually covered in the foster program? Um, do do the parents have to pay for medical exams, food? What what's included mm -hmm. in that? So when someone decides to become a foster parent, um, the medical um, needs are covered by the shelter. Mm -hmm. um, when they're in foster care, even though they're not 
at our physical location, they're still considered part of our system. So okay. um, anything like medicine, uh, vet checks, visits for kennel cough or mm -hmm. upper respiratory, um, just to see their progress, that's all things that we would cover. Uh, the only thing we ask for fosters to cover is the basic needs of the animal, okay. like food, uh, any toys or pet furniture, such as beds or kennels. Those are the, the okay. costs that we ask them to, to absorb, as well as uh, a one-time licensing fee of $25. Okay. And that's just required by the state of Illinois. Illinois. Okay. So if you're interested in fostering, I mean, I think that the the benefits far outweigh the monetary mm -hmm. commitment that you're making. And you can foster cats, you can foster dogs. This here is Scribbles. This here is... <laughs> I love that picture. Yeah, look at her little smile. <laughs> Our fosters just love fostering mm -hmm. these pets. So um, if you have a preference, we can always find the perfect foster fit for you. Yes, definitely. Well. And I mean, we have fosters that are very specific over who they're bringing in mm -hmm. to their homes. It could be that you want just kittens or you mm -hmm. only want, you know, dogs that are good with other mm -hmm. dogs or you only want socialization fosters so really there's so many animals to choose from in terms of animals that right. could use a little rehabilitation um, that we're always looking for more people to join the program so we really encourage you if you're interested to visit our website www.anticruelty.org and go through the services and programs page and you'll find the foster um, program highlighted there and you can actually download an application to become a foster parent straight off the website and then email it straight to me my email address is l k r u p i n s k i at anticruelty.org or you can just drop it off in person mm -hmm. well thanks lydia yeah thank um you. our foster program is very very important to us and mm -hmm. if you are at all interested in us definitely give us a call or if you have any questions you can call us right yes. now this is a live call in television show on can tv 21 mm -hmm. you can call us at 312-738-1060 so more about the foster program. Um, how many people currently are enrolled in our program? That's a good question because we are currently um, switching our database. So I know oh, the exact okay. number. <laughs> we actually have 36 <laughs> individuals who currently have animals out at foster, but we have about 150 who are signed up. So okay. um, the numbers really coincide with people's availability mm -hmm. if they're in town, um, as okay. well as who is in need of foster. Springtime is coming. So if yes. you're interested in fostering now, it would be a great time to set up and get your first foster under your belt before we're all inundated with kittens and puppies so yes. um, within the next couple months we'll be looking for additional forces in that program yes spring is really kitten and puppy season yes. and that's one of the most important times to have fosters as well as adopters so mm -hmm. again if you are interested in fostering or adopting please call us at 312-644-8338 mm -hmm. or you can visit our website at www.anticruelty.org um, so um, how many, since you're going through statistics and whatnot, um, <laughs> how many successful fosters do we generally have mm -hmm. going through the society at any given point or mm -hmm. throughout the year? Mm -hmm. um, I, can, I can't give you specific numbers of okay. how many came out. We're still working on statistics okay. from last year. There's <laughs> a lot okay. to absorb there, but I can tell you that 100% of all of our fosters were placed in homes last That's year. Wonderful. So it was a 100% success rate. So okay. animals that would go out either for a weekend or even months um, were okay. all adopted either by their foster parents or brought back and successfully adopted through the shelter. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and you said, you just said how many pets, but again, mm -hmm. how many people did you say? Uh, we have we have a core group of about 40 okay. individuals who are always fostering. So those okay. are serial fosters okay. where the second that an animal gets brought back to the shelter, they're taking another one home. Got but it. there's definitely a lot of people, um, especially in recent months, who have been fostering and adopting. Ah. <laughs> so they sometimes fall off the foster list because once they found that forever friend, they want to spend as much time with them as right. possible. And then some, you know, in a year or so, they'll mm -hmm. sometimes come back and foster once more. And another good thing, if you are actually interested in fostering, it might be your opportunity to, quote, try out a pet if you mm -hmm. don't know if you're ready to have a full-time pet but you know you want to foster this might be your opportunity to find that perfect pet mm -hmm. because you can actually help pets out while you're actually searching for your own perfect mm -hmm. pet as well mm -hmm. and something too that I get a question a lot about in terms of once you do get this foster home you know how do you physically set up your space mm -hmm. especially if you have other animals and it's actually pretty incredible especially if you're doing kittens okay. um, since the season is upon the us season is coming. <laughs> it's a good one to talk about but for kittens I mean all you need is even a bathroom something okay. small especially for cats who are going into an apartment that's a little bit mm -hmm. larger in size or, or a house, it's actually better for them to be contained to a smaller space so that they're not as um, 
they don't feel as much out of their comfort zone. Okay. For those of you who have had cats, you know very well that the second you move a piece of furniture, it stresses them out. So mm -hmm. putting them in one small room can actually be really beneficial for their rehabilitation. So okay. even if you don't have a lot of physical space in an apartment, you can still make a great foster home for kittens, okay. especially. So what are the requirements if I were to want a foster? Yeah, um, so essentially um, you need to have landlord permission um, that you course. can have animals yeah. in your apartment. Um, if you own or rent or you know uh, own a condo or own a house, that's mm -hmm. a little bit different. You right. can give yourself right. permission. Um, hopefully the permission of everyone in your household. That's something okay. too that we want to make sure. So um, we like to see who um, is living in the home. So if there's children, we want to know that so that mm -hmm. we can make sure that the foster candidates are candidates who get along well with the young children or little okay. specifics like that. Um, in addition, we mentioned the $25 mm -hmm. foster licensing fee. So you absorb that cost just once. And then we actually pay that um, annually to renew your foster license. So it's just that one time. And then there's an application. So if you're interested, uh, visit our website at www.anticruelty.org. Under the programs link, you'll see our foster program and some more details about it laid out there. We also have an article that talks a little more in depth about what fostering does for for people and, and the animals. So if you're interested in applying, fill out the application and you can email it to us or drop it off directly at the shelter. Okay, and if you're mm -hmm. just joining us, my name is Emily. I'm the manager of marketing and events at the Anti-Cruelty Society and I'm here with Lydia. Mm -hmm. She is the volunteer coordinator at the Anti-Cruelty Society and we are on Can TV 21, a live interactive call-in television program where you can ask us any questions you possibly want to about the Anti-Cruelty Society our foster program or our volunteer program. Mm -hmm. So call us right now if you want to at 312-738-1060. <laughs> um, so we've got not only foster programs, but mm -hmm. we also have volunteer programs, correct? Yes, so we have upwards of 15 different volunteer programs at any given time at the Anti-Cruelty Society and they're really key to the to the socialization of our animals okay. that is the number one goal of volunteers mm -hmm. so whether you are working with dogs or mm -hmm. cats or some of our other animal populations mm -hmm. that may be on site um, what we're looking to do with the volunteers is give the animals some extra attention mm -hmm. um, some more interaction there's been studies done that show that a shelter animal needs to have at least 15 minutes of socialization a day to be at their optimal personality level and to mm -hmm. stay stress-free and healthy so mm -hmm. the volunteers help to implement that um, and, and our animals do get over 15 minutes. Yes, <laughs> yes they definitely our do. Our animals get so much love. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just by actually not even just our volunteers, but a lot the of people, staff as well. Staff yeah. and people who come over on their lunch breaks because yes. they want to yes. get away from their computers and enjoy their time with animals. Yes. So. so it's all of those different elements mm -hmm. coming together. But um, but what the, usually what I explain to new volunteers, especially at orientations, is we have about six to 800 animals in our care at any given time, and we only have 100 staff members right. to kind of meet those needs. Yeah. So the volunteers fill a little bit of that extra time with, with their extra attention, and as well okay. as the, the yeah. workers in the area that come. So thank you to everyone that comes thank to visit everyone. us on their lunch breaks. But yep. if you are doing that, you may be a great candidate to become part of our volunteer Absolutely. program, and we give you the extra tools and training to be able to take that commitment that you're already making to the mm -hmm. anti cruelty Society a step further um, towards working with specific populations and having you know specific goals set on what you're doing when you're at the shelter. Absolutely. And here are a few more images of just how much the volunteers just love the animals mm -hmm. there. So this is just a, these are just a few snippets of everything you can possibly do at the society in our volunteer program. So again, if you have any questions whatsoever, call us at 312-644-8338 or go to our website at www.anticruelty.org and you can actually find the foster and volunteer information mm -hmm. on the volunteer page. Mm -hmm. um, about how many volunteers do we generally have? Also, or do we have six, our data, database? <laughs> I know, right? So about six to seven hundred any wow. given time, and volunteers they commit on different levels. So we have some people that come in every single week for a full okay. shift. Some people that just come once a month for okay. five hours. That's one of the requirements we have is that you at least put in five hours a month okay. for a full calendar year. Um, so we do have people that just meet that minimum requirement, but others that definitely you know jump in head right. first and do any and every program that they can and help in multiple ways from sewing to walking dogs. Yep. To, to helping uh, put photos up on our website. There's a lot of different programs out there. So if you're interested, please you visit interested. our website. 
You can sign up for an upcoming volunteer orientation at www.anticruelty.org. And I like to warn people that those fill up very quickly. We have a, a huge desire. We're actually very lucky to have many, many people interested in joining the program. So we always ask for your patience when trying to sign up for those slots. Well, thank you, Lydia. Yeah. We have to actually end our program right now, but definitely stay tuned for the next program. We really appreciate you being thank here. Thank you. Thanks if for having me. Anyone is out there and interested in either volunteering or fostering, mm -hmm. definitely give us a call. Thank you mm -hmm. for watching. Thank you. And watch next week, next Tuesday at 4.30, and we'll tell you more about the Anti-Cruelty Society.